Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to unboxing the Arduino MKR1000. And in this video, we're going to talk about the MKR1000, which is a Arduino board dedicated to IoT application. And before I get started, I have to give my shameless plug that Forstronics.com carries authentic Arduino boards, including the Uno and the Arduino MKR1000. So if you like what you see in this video, I'm gonna to try to be non-biased, of course, but if you like what you see, you can pick one up at forstronics.com and we have a sale on them for the rest of the summer 2016. So let's get started. Okay, what are some of the headlines or the main features? And of course, I'm gonna go into more detail on all of these, but one of the main portions on this board is a smaller board from Atmel, the AT SAM W25, which provides a powerful microcontroller. It provides Wi Fi capability, it provides some cryptography for security for the Wi Fi aspect. It also comes pre certified. So I list some of these certifications. And you might say, well, who cares about that? But that's actually a pretty nice feature because what that means is if you actually want to turn it into a product and sell it, it already has FCC certification if you're in the US, for instance. If it didn't have that, you would have to pay to take it to a lab, to have it FCC certified, so on and so forth. So that's already built in. It calls itself an SOC. I don't think it really is an SOC, which is system on a chip, and I'll explain that later. Also, the MKR1000 board, now this is separate from the Atmel board I was just talking about, has a built-in battery charger for a single cell lithium polymer battery. So that's nice because it's built in. So you can run it off a battery and you can actually charge the battery when the board is plugged in. Another thing to note, uh, this is not surprising, I don't think it's a big deal, but it's 3.3 volt power, meaning the logic levels and things like that. It does have a five volt power supply. You can plug it into USB. It doesn't have an AC wall connection which is different than a lot of Arduino boards. So here's an actual unboxing of it. So I, I show the box at the top. One thing that jumps out at you right away is it's pretty small and I don't have a problem with that. I just, you didn't expect it. I didn't expect it when I got it, but it's actually a pretty small board. It comes with header pins that you can attach if you want. You can see the, the, the board I mentioned, the AT SAM W25 is right here. And I'm going to talk about more of the parts on this board soon, but headers you can actually attach if you want to. Real small form factor. One thing, here's one little complaint. I don't like how they printed this stuff on the bottom. So if you use the header pins and you put this on a breadboard, you can't even really see these pin numbers. I wish they would have put them real small on the top at least as well. Another thing that's a little surprising that's not a big deal you know, I understand you can't put an Arduino shield on this board, but they didn't use their same numbering convention that they do on the standard Arduino board. So, for instance, where you have the power and the reset, that's where you typically have the same side as typically where you have the analog pins. They, they didn't do that for whatever reason, and maybe it's just to make it more symmetrical with the same amount of pins on each side. Okay, let's take a look at the schematic to see what's actually on the MKR1000. And I have a picture of it in the, the corner to kind of reference. Here we have the USB connector, which has the USB communication. The, the chip, or the Atmel board, I'll call it, has a USB peripheral. This portion right here on the schematic represents the Atmel SAM W25 board. The clock is built onto the board, and I'll talk about what's on that board, but here's an external clock for the real-time clock capability that's on the board, and that's just a 32-some kilohertz clock. Here's just some LEDs. This is a little confusing. They, ha they have sort of the board representation schematic. Then they almost have like a picture of the board itself right here. Not quite sure why they did it. Maybe there's just for readability. I'm not sure. If we go down to some of the other pieces on the board. So that top piece of the schematic was mainly just the SAM W25 board. Here, let me move the photo over. Here we see some of the more of the parts on the board and here's a little, the, one of the cool features on the board and that's the battery charging circuit. So let me zoom in on that a little more. So here's the battery charging chip and this is a microchip. And when I say microchip, I mean the company microchip. 
It's made by Microchip, which recently bought Atmel, so they own Atmel now, so maybe that's why they're including it on here. Then, besides though, just that Microchip, and I, I should mention, that charging Microchip is right here that controls the battery charging. And so the idea is, well, why do you need that chip? It's because the battery itself is gonna have some kind of charge profile. And when you're dealing with lithium batteries, you have to charge them a certain way or else you can have issues. So you can only charge them to a certain voltage. You typically charge the current first until the voltage gets up to a certain level and so on and so forth. So this chip is managing that, but it's also managing it with this chip. And I think I forget who makes this chip, but what this is, is a regulator, but it's not a voltage regulator. It's more of a constant current regulator. And what it does is supply the charge current for the battery when the battery is charging. A lot of MOSFETs are transistors on here, I guess for cutting different powers off to different areas or, or so on and so forth. I didn't really analyze it that closely. If you look at the, the chip itself, so this, this right here is actually that that current regulator chip that I talked about. So you have the current regulator, you have the battery charging chip. Then a lot of these other, I'll call them small ICs, are these um, transistors or MOSFETs that you see also on the board. So once again, a lot of the, I'll use quote unquote intelligence is in the Atmel chip. And there's not much to this board itself as far as the circuit design. Okay, so I wanted to get into more detail on the SAM W25 or the AT SAM W25. And you can see it actually has its own little part list. So here's a picture of it with the shield on, but if you take the shield off, you can see you have multiple chips. And as I said earlier, they refer to this as an SOC, which stands for system on a chip. I would argue this is an SOP for system on a you know, PCB board. So I, I don't know if, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, anybody in the comments section, but I don't think this is the definition of an SOC. But anyway, it's definitely a cool chip. If you notice, there's a lot of parts on it, but the key parts I'll say are right here. So I, th there's the shield, but here we have the actual main chips. So here we have the Wi-Fi chip, we have the crypto chip, and we actually have the SAM D21. If you know the Arduino Zero, this is the same chip on the Arduino Zero, which is a really nice chip because it's 32-bit ARM microcontroller. It's very powerful, has a lot of advanced features. And the great thing is, it's lower power than the Uno chip, the Atmega 328P. So a lot of functionality and low power consumption. So these chips are all working together, but with this, you can expect a lot of the same functionality you get from the Arduino Zero, if you're familiar with that board. Now, I will mention, this doesn't have an onboard debugger chip like the Zero does. Nonetheless, it's still pretty nice. And you can also see, I put the price up here. So if you wanna buy just this module, and you can see I have the footprint here, it's a little covered up now. But if you wanted to buy just this module and put it into a design, you can. And note, this module is FCC certified as well as other certifications. So you don't have to get it certified if you just put it into a design. Now, this price tag is a little expensive. I mean, if you're trying to get the consumer electronics market for an end design, you know, that's a little pricey. If you buy them in bulk, you get them down to like $10 or so, which is a little better. But I mean, if you're a hobbyist, who really cares? I mean, this is not that expensive. Let's talk a little bit about the power consumptions because it is for IoT applications. They do have the onboard battery charger. So what kind of battery life can I get from a lithium polymer you know, single cell battery and what type of uh, consumption does, does the board do? So before I get up to the stuff at the top, let me mention these two measurements I did on an instrument I had at work. So here I, I have the power going into V in, so I have five volts so I'm representing sort of the USB power. And I just have the board doing some simple operations. I'm not using the Wi-Fi just because where I had it, I couldn't use Wi-Fi. But you can see during normal operations, you get about 20 milliamps. And that's what Arduino says on, on the, um, the web page. So that's pretty accurate. But if I power it directly at VCC, where I only use 3.3 volts, 
you can see because I'm not going through power conversion stages or I'm not lighting up LEDs, I get a much lower power profile. So this is, so what would you get with the battery? I mean, you're probably gonna get something in between because the battery has to go through the charging circuit, I believe. Actually, I could be wrong there. Let me retract that, I may be wrong there. So with the battery, you'd expect to get this type of draw. Once again, depending on what you're doing on the board, but the SAMD 21 chip is pretty low power. Here's some notes that they provide. They say the charging current is 3.3, excuse me, 350 milliamps. So what they say is they recommend a battery with a minimum charge of 700 milliamp hours or 0.7 amp hours. So if you're not familiar with the battery terminology, you may wanna look into that. But what they're, what they're saying is because they're charging at this rate of current, they a good safe procedure is, is to charge at a half C because this, this would be one C and that'll prolong the battery life and be more safe. So they're saying don't get a battery that's too low because you could possibly damage it. Now, I would say this is a little conservative. You probably can charge a battery. A lot of batteries are rated to be charged at 1C, so on and so forth, but that's at your own risk. Probably, and also based on this power, you're probably gonna want something this power, this size, I should say, or higher. So here I do an example calculation so if we assume the average current of the microcontroller is 20 milliamps and the Wi-Fi, when you're doing, when you're on Wi-Fi and communicating, that's when you use up a lot of power. And I didn't actually measure this. I got this just from their uh, web page information. They say when you're using the Wi-Fi, you're at about 100 milliamps. So if we had a single cell lithium polymer battery that was 1000 milliamp hours, here's the type of battery life we'd be looking at. So if we, we operated it with the Wi-Fi always on, it's always connected to a network, we're only gonna get about 8.3 hours, which isn't too bad if it's a rechargeable battery. But if we don't always have the Wi-Fi on, let's say we use it, there's some kind of router in the area, it turns on, it takes a measurement and then says that stores that measurement, let's say, uh, at some kind of cloud location, let's say your Dropbox account stores that measurement and then it shuts itself off and it's not doing the Wi-Fi constantly. So here I did an example where let's say the chip is running at 80% of the time, just the microcontroller, and then you're using the Wi-Fi 20% of the time, you're gonna get 25 hours out of that same battery. So you can see the effect of Wi-Fi and you know how much of the percentage of the time are you using the Wi-Fi really depends on your application. You could probably use it much, much less if you're only trying to measure something periodically and you can get much longer battery life. It's just dependent on how you use it and knowing that the Wi-Fi is the big power consumer. Now, there's also levers you can pull on the SAM D21 microcontroller chip that probably can get you way below 20 milliamps. So maybe I'll do some videos on the future on how to get this down to a lower power consumption so you can get much longer battery life. Okay, let's look at a quick example with the MKR1000, and I'm just gonna use one of the built-in examples for the Wi-Fi. So first, um, if you notice, so you have to have at least uh, the Arduino IDE 1.6.8, I have 1.6.9. You can see uh, in the board manager for the SAM board, SAM D board, you have the Arduino Zero, and it's just listed under that. So I have that selected. I should note too, when you first connect it, if you're running a Windows computer, you're gonna have to download a driver. They have some information on that on the on the getting started page. Uh, if you're using Mac or Linux, you, you don't have to do that. So yeah, I just showed you that. Let me show you the examples because there's actually a lot, which is nice because using Wi-Fi uh, can be tricky. So here's, so this library will already be pre-installed. So here's the Wi-Fi 101 library, and that's the, the main library for using the Wi-Fi capability. And you can see they have a bunch of different sketches for different capabilities on Wi-Fi, whether they're using TCIP, UDP, or HTTP type web services. I'm just gonna show this simple connect with WPA, and WPA is just a security protocol for routers 
Uh, you can see there's another one connect with WEP. So most of these sketches you'll have to do that. They, they pretty much default to WPA, but they do tell you if you have WEP. If you have a modern router, you could typically choose either. Connect with WPA is the more common one. And if you your router has basically a simple password that you enter, that's probably what you're using. So that's the sketch I have here. The main difference is, is I'm not showing my network name or my network password. So when you go into these sketches, you're gonna have to set this, you know, the name of the Wi-Fi router you're on and the security password. Okay, so that'll get set, but that's the main thing you have to set. And this is just gonna connect to my router here at home and then print some information about it. that's all this this function or i should say this sketch is going to do i'm going to do probably future tutorials on on more things you can do more uh wi-fi cooler stuff you can do but this is just for example purposes so let me go to the serial monitor so here you can see it's trying attempting to connect it may take a little bit this is the name of my network how original i never changed it netgear 42 so there's like a 10 second delay and there it connected. And so it's printing out the signal strength. So that's probably negative 66 dBm encryption type. I'm not sure what this is. This is the MAC address. This is the IP address of the MKR 1000. And I know it is because most local addresses from routers are 192.168. something something, and this is just 18. And you can see it just prints it out over and over again. So anyway, quick example with the MKR 1000 in action. Okay, that's it for unboxing the Arduino MKR 1000. If you have anything to add or any mistakes I made to correct, please use the comment section below. I always love when listeners contribute and I'll do my shameless plug again. I have these boards as well as Uno's as well as other products at forcetronics.com. So check it out. Thank you for watching.